Today we're going to be starting off chapter 6, which is all about polygons. Um, we're going to start today with the interior and exterior angles of polygons and kind of work our way through. Um, there's going to be a lot of vocab today, as well as some formulas that we're going to utilize for this entire unit. Um, so the first thing says, what is a polygon? A polygon is a closed figure with straight sides. So closed... Figure with straight sides. These are two dimensional figures. All right, so they're not going to be in 3D, they're two dimensional. We have a lot of types of polygons, and we name polygons based on their size, the number of them, um, and some of them have unique names, some of them get more generic as you go through. So a three-sided sided shape is called a triangle. Okay. Four-sided is called a quadrilateral. We have a lot of different types of quadrilaterals. We'll spend the rest of this unit kind of diving into the different types of quadrilaterals there are. A five-sided shape is called a pentagon. Six is a hexagon. Seven is a heptagon. Eight is an octagon. Nine is a nonagon. Ten is a decagon. 12 is a dodecagon. And when we get higher than 12, we don't really have unique names to them. We just say whatever the number of sides is and the word gone. So a 15 sided shape would be called a 15 gone. A 14 sided shape would be called a 14 gone, so on and so forth. If you have n sides, n represents the number of sides. We call this an n-gon. When we don't know the exact number of them, we say it's an n-gon number of sides. And n is going to be our variable we use to represent the number of sides for this unit. We have something that's called a regular polygon. That word regular tells us a lot. It tells us it's going to be equilateral and equiangular. What equilateral means, if you remember from back when we did triangles, that means that all the sides are going to be congruent or equal. And equiangular means that all angles are going to be equal or congruent. It's kind of almost like a perfect shape. Everything about that is equal. All of the polygons we'll be working with, um, kind of going forward here, or we're going to try to make them regular. So whenever you see that word regular, it is really, really important. You kind of highlight it and focus in on it. So like I said, whenever we see that word regular, I want you to focus in on that. It's going to be how we do a lot of our equations later on. We also have these words called concave and convex. That tells you what the shape looks like. It is If it is concaved, you have one of your sides or your vert vertices kind of going inward. So an example of this, if I draw a shape and I have one of the sides kind of, kind of going in like this. Notice how that side, the vertex is going inwards there. Convex means just a plain old shape. All right, nothing's going inward. All right, it is just a convex. What I want you to do, real quick, we're going to draw a regular pentagon. So over here on the side here, let's draw a pentagon. A pentagon, remember, has five sides. If it is a regular pentagon, that art, that means that all of the sides are going to be congruent. That also means that all of the interior angles are also going to be the exact same. So those are your interior angles. We also have exterior angles. And how we draw the exterior angles, you take your size and you kind of extend them out. So this would be an exterior angle, this would be an exterior angle. So 
So you notice your exterior angles and your interior angle, they are a linear pair. They create a straight line there. So we're going to be talking about how we find interior angles and exterior angles and what the difference is between the two things. So all of these things right here are going to be equations we're going to have to memorize. All right, talking about the sum of the interior and exterior angles and what each of them is. So the first one says the sum of interior angles. Okay, define this um, sum. It depends on the number of sides. So the more sides you have in a shape, the uh, bigger the sum will be because there'll be more and more angles to combine together. So how do you do this is we take n, the number of sides, minus 2, and times that by 180. Okay, so for a pentagon, since it has five sides, I would plug in five. So I'd say five minus two, and then times that by 180. All right, and that would give me 540 there. For the exterior angles, all of your exterior angles will always equal the same regardless of the number of sides. Your exterior angles always combine or sum to 360 degrees. Always, no matter what the number of sides is. So whether you have five sides, 20 sides, 100 sides, they will always be the exact same, 360. For each interior angle, that means what you're doing here, and this has to be for a regular polygon, you're taking that sum, all right, and you're dividing it by the number of angles. So if you look at our example here for the pentagon, we know the pentagon added up to 540 degrees. To find the measure of each of those angles, if they're all the exact same, I would take that 540 and I would divide it by the number of sides, which is 5. So I would do 540 divided by 5 to figure out what each of those sides would actually, or each of those angles would actually be. To write that in an actual formula for us, we take the sum of the interior angles, which is that first formula we had up there, n minus 2 times 180, and we divide it by the number of sides. For each exterior angle, all right, our exterior angles, again, this is for a regular polygon, we know our exterior angles always add up to 360, so if we were finding what each of those equals, you would take that 360 degrees and you would divide it by the number of sides to figure out what each exterior angle is. So essentially, if you can remember this formula up here, you've pretty much got all the formulas down there, variations of that. Another big key important thing to know is that your exterior angles always add to 360. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple example problems. All right, it says find the sum of interior angles of a hexagon. Now you think, well, a hexagon, how many sides does that have? A hexagon has six sides, so our n value is going to be six. The sum of interior angles, well, that formula is right up here, n minus 2 times 180. So the sum of the interior angles, n minus 2 times 180. So I'm going to plug in six for that n, 6 minus 2. Times 180. You could type this into your calculator just like you see it, or you can simplify it more. 6 minus 2 is 4, and 4 times 180 is 720 degrees. So a hexagon will add up to 720 degrees. It says find each interior angle of a regular dodecagon. Well, we know a dodecagon has 12 sides. They want to find the measure of each interior angle. So what we have to find first, we have to find the sum of the shape and then divide that sum by the number of sides it has. So we're going to use that sum equation, n minus 2 times 180, 12 minus 2 times 180. All right, 12 minus 2 is 10. 10 times 180 is 1,800. We're going to take that sum and we're going to divide it by the number of sides, which is 12. When we divide that by 12, we get 150 degrees. So each angle in a dodecagon is 150 degrees. Number three says find the sum of exterior angles of a regular decagon. We know a decagon has 10 sides. Now the sum of the exterior angles, remember the sum of the exterior angles, it doesn't matter how many sides it has, it's always going to be the exact same. It's always going to be 360 degrees. Next one here, it says find the number of sides. So we're trying to find the end value of a polygon if the sum of the interior angles is 200 or 2,700. So we know the sum of um, the interior degrees is that the formula n minus 2 times 180. We know that equals 2,700. So what we're going to do here is we're going to work backwards and solve for n. I'm going to first divide by 180. 
So I get n minus 2 equals 15. I'm going to add 2 to both sides, so I get n equals 17. It says find the number of sides we're solving for n again of a regular polygon. So it means everything's going to be equal in it. If each interior angle is 165. Now what we could do here is we do the each interior angle formula. That is this, n minus 2 times 180 divided by n equals 165. And we could totally solve for n here, but it'd be a little bit of a pain. So I view this problem kind of like this. If I draw out my interior angle, if it's 165, here's my interior angle of 165. I know I can find my exterior angle. If I do 180 minus 165, all right, I get 15 degrees. So I know each exterior angle is 15 degrees. And the exterior angle th equation is 360 divided by n equals 15. That formula looks a lot easier to me than this one. So I'm going to utilize this one because I think it's easier. So I'm going to times both sides by n here. So I get 360 equals 15n. Divide both sides by 15, so I get n equals 24. So this polygon has 24 sides. Again, you can totally do that first equation. I just think it's a little bit lengthier to solve. All right, for number six and seven here, we're going to be solving for x. So when you're looking at this, you figure out what type of shape it is. That means how many sides it is and how many the interior angles should add up to. So I'm looking here. I've got one, two, three, four, five. So this is a pentagon. I need to figure out what all those interior angles should add up to. So I can do my sum of the interior angles. So 5 minus 2 times 180. And that equals 540 degrees. So I know if I add up all those things, it should equal 540 degrees. So I'm going to add them up. 60 plus 130 plus 140 plus 120 plus x equals 540. If I combine all those, I get 450 plus x equals 540. Divide both sides by 450, and I get x is 90 degrees. For number seven here, figure out how many sides it has. It has one, two, three, four sides. This is a quadrilateral. You figure out what the sum of a quadrilateral should be. So four minus two times 180, and I get 360 degrees. So this should add up to 360. So if I add them all up, 80 plus 120 plus x plus 100 equals 360. I get 300 plus x equals 360. Subtract both sides by 300, and I get 60 degrees.